Welcome to Living Divine Mercy here on EWTN. I'm Father Chris Alar of the Marian Fathers here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. You know, in preparation for Divine Mercy Sunday, coming up the Sunday after Easter, the last several weeks we've been covering the main elements of the devotion of Divine Mercy. And today we finish with the final channel of grace given by Jesus to St. Faustina, which is the Hour of Mercy. Because Jesus died on the cross at 3 p.m., the hour between 3 and 4 in the afternoon is known as the hour of great mercy. Jesus told St. Faustina that during this special time, she should invoke his mercy for the world, particularly for the conversion of sinners. So he told her to pray the chaplet of divine mercy at this time, right? Actually, no. He first told her to pray the stations of the cross at this hour, providing that her duties permitted it. And if she couldn't do that, he asked her to briefly go into the chapel and adore him in the Blessed Sacrament. And if that wasn't even possible, to simply stop wherever she was and absorb herself in prayer, even if only for a moment meditating on his passion. Well, why then do we pray the chaplet of divine mercy in the three o'clock hour? Well, because it's about his passion. As the prayer states, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. You know, Jesus told St. Faustina, at three o'clock, implore my mercy, especially for sinners And if only for a brief moment, immerse yourself in my passion, particularly in my abandonment at the moment of agony. This is the hour of great mercy. In this hour, I will refuse nothing to the soul that makes a request of me in virtue of my passion. In this hour, you can obtain everything for yourself and for others for the asking. It was the hour of grace for the whole world. Mercy triumphs over justice. You know, surprisingly, in addition to our prayers for the conversion of sinners, what Jesus says he wants above all during this time is that we have mercy on him. He wants us to recall his sacrifice of love. He wants us to think about what he did for us on the cross. He wants us to unite ourselves to his passion. So basically, we are to console the heart of Jesus. And through St. Faustina, our Lord specifically asked for acts of love for him and for our neighbor. You know, I find it particularly motivating because there is much merit when we do this. In fact, in passage 369 of St. Faustina's diary, Jesus said, There is more merit to one hour of meditation on my sorrowful passion than there is to a whole year of flagellation that draws blood. The contemplation of my painful wounds is of great profit to you, and it brings me great joy. Wow, this is what 3 p.m. is all about. In a way, this hour is a kind of mini Divine Mercy Sunday that arrives every day, Why? Because it's the time to pray for our loved ones, especially for the conversion of unrepentant sinners, and to recite the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, as we've been saying. Now, some people believe that you can only pray the Chaplet during the three o'clock hour, but rest easy. This powerful prayer can be said any time during the day, or even continuously. Just because three o'clock in the afternoon has special graces associated with it doesn't mean that we can't pray the chaplet at any other time. And on a final note, sometimes people say to me, Father, I'm always awakened at 3 a.m. Isn't this the hour of the devil since it mocks the 3 p.m. hour of Jesus? Well, Father Seraphim used to remind us that no hour of the day belongs to the devil, especially the 3 a.m. hour. The reason is because although no one knows for sure, pious tradition tells us that Jesus may have risen from the dead at 3 a.m. 
And since many theologians believe Jesus did rise at this time, this hour, like all the hours, belongs to Jesus and not to the devil. Well, as long as we don't let it, correct, okay? So now let's return uh, for the last installment of our interviews with Vinnie Flynn. We've already spoken about the feast, the image, the novena, and the chaplet of divine mercy. So now let us finish with the hour of mercy. So thank you everybody for joining us as we are now on the last episode of our five-part series in preparation for Divine Mercy Sunday. And we've been speaking with Vinnie Flynn about his book, Seven Secrets of Divine Mercy. And today we finish oh, Vinnie with the last of the elements. We've been going over the last five weeks, what we've been calling Finch, the acronym for the feast, F. I, the image, N, the novena, C, the chaplet, and H, now the hour of mercy. So, Vinny, welcome back to the show for nice the fifth and final time, but yes. you are absolutely the right guy for the job to be able to explain to us what our Lord wrapped up in this last part of the devotion, meaning the three o'clock hour, and why is this hour so important that our Lord really focused our prayer to be done at this time, if possible, and what is the meaning of this the three o'clock hour. The well, three o'clock hour, traditionally, this is the hour that Christ died. This was the hour of his great redeeming sacrifice, the hour of great mercy, where he, his mercy was open wide for the world. Yeah. You know, so that that's he he asked for a remembrance of his passion during the three o'clock hour. Yeah. And as we talked about the last program a little bit, people sometimes think that there's specific things we need to do during this three o'clock hour, one of which people think is the chaplet. Well, and, you know, I'd like to up and uh, right. begin at this point, Vinny, because that's where we left off, as you said. And I think it's important because if you remember, the question was, can I only pray the chaplet at the three o'clock hour? Now you right. answered, no, we can pray the chaplet anytime. It is fitting to be prayed. But, you right. know, you touched on, and this is where I wanted to open Open, that our Lord didn't even really say to pray the chaplet right away Never at the three o'clock hour. So no. what did our Lord no. say? No, as, as I mentioned last show, he, he wanted her to pray the chaplet unceasingly all the time, even as a novena, an unending novena of chaplets. But for the three o'clock hour, he had specific things he told her. And the main thing he told her that he really wanted her to do was the stations of the cross. And I, I say this to people, and they go, what? You, not the chaplet? No, not the chaplet. Stations of the cross. But uh, I love that Father George Kosicki used to have this um, thing he talked about where actually God reversed the roles uh, when he did this because he, 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 Father George used to go back to the Abraham bargaining with God. Here's <laughs> One God, of my favorite here's, stories. Here's God about to destroy, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, so Abraham starts by saying, well, you know, what if there's 50 souls? Will you not will you not destroy it for 50? And so he bargains God down. 50, well, what about 45? You're almost like an auctioneer. What about 45? Do I hear 40, <laughs> Lord? You know, like, <laughs> how about 10, you know? And in this case, in the hour of mercy, God reverses the role and he bargains down wow. what he requires yeah. of us. So he says, it's almost like he's saying, okay, Father Chris, I, I, you know, I want you to say the uh, Stations of the Cross during this hour, but it's okay. If you can't do that, mm -hmm. then could you at least stop for a minute and go into the chapel and, and meditate on my passion? And, but that's okay if you can't do that, Father. <laughs> um, maybe just stop for a moment, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just brief moment to enter into You're prayer. Right. I, I like how he walks that down. Uh, Father Seraphim used to say he started in the general concept, pray for the conversion of sinners, but then he narrowed it down that I want you to do the stations. The people, as you mentioned, why the stations? Because it's about his passion. Absolutely. The stations are about his passion. Right. And so, uh, Vinny, then the question will be, well, then why are we praying the chaplet of divine mercy at the three o'clock hour? It's also about his passion. It's all about his passion. It's, it's one of the best ways to meditate on the passion of Christ because we're, we're, and we're, we're echoing, we're taking up as we talked about his thirst for souls, the reason for his passion is to save souls. So we're joining him in offering ourselves to the Father for the sake of souls. Have mercy on the whole world. Yeah. You know? and, so. and one of the last things, too, about the three o'clock hour is the fact that 
you can almost rationalize it that it's, well, as the song used to say, it's five o'clock somewhere. Ex absolutely. It's three o'clock somewhere. And so we know that this is one of the things. John Paul II, when he died, um, the night people say, well, he died the night before Divine Mercy Sunday, Father. Well, he died on the vigil, which we know in the church we celebrate as actually in the Jewish tradition. Right. It is the next day. It's a celebration yes. of the next day. But John Paul II, and I always like to point this out, when he died, it was... Divine Mercy Sunday in the Philippines. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, we always turn to our, our Filipino brothers and sisters. They all know my love for the Philippines and the culture. But this is, goes back to, Vinny, your concept of God being outside of time. Absolutely. And it, it's somewhere in the world it's 3 o'clock. And it's not, it's, not a, it's not a magic hour. The whole point of it is, well, this hour calls to mind that this is when he died, the reality of him dying on the cross, this agony that he went through. It's The, the clock is of what's important. True. You know, so I, I don't think it's even rationalizing at all to say it's three o'clock. I'm thinking of that hour. Yeah. It, it's, if, if it's not that hour now, but okay, I missed it. it it's four o'clock. Well, Lord, I go back to, in, in your eternal now, I go back to that hour when you died on the cross. I think that's the best way to look at it because we can get too scrupulous. We can become too, well, you know, Father, I'm not going to say it now because I missed it during the right. 3 o'clock hour. This is, this is getting to be a little too scrupulous. And, and, and back to when we were talking about the bargaining of God reducing the requirements because he wants to have mercy on us. And that's why he gave all these promises if you observe the hour of mercy. the great graces that he offers true. for anyone who, who meditates on his passion because he wants to have mercy on us yeah. all. And Vinny, didn't our Lord say to St. Faustina, I will not deny you anything that you ask of me in the three o'clock hour. Now, please don't take that to mean, well, I need the lottery, Lord. Uh, mm -hmm. I really need to win the lottery. Um, no, we don't take it that way. Our Lord even quantified or qualified it by saying, if it's, if it's compatible, compatible with my with will. My will. Right. So we have to remember, sometimes God doesn't answer. Well, put it this way. God answers all prayers. It just might not be the way that we want because he answers in the way that's best for us. And sometimes, Vinny, I'll give you a hint. I used to pray for a wife and I used to say, Lord, send me the perfect wife. <laughs> yeah. Well, little did I know that was not what was best for me. Now, as a priest, I can't imagine doing anything different. And so I'll be honest with you. I'm glad God answered, right. but the answer was no. Right. <laughs> yes. Be careful of the prayers you pray. <laughs> Sometimes. Yes. And so, so Vinny, Father Seraphim used to say uh, that during the three o'clock hour, it was also a time to pray for the conversion of sinners. And this was a yes. very important time. Um, why do you think he asked for that specifically at the three o'clock hour as well? Well, again, it's, it's, it's joining in what he was doing. He was yeah. dying for or sinners, You're right. You're you know, right. so that that's the hour when his his mercy was opened up for sinners, and he made it clear to Faustina, even the greatest sinners, especially the greatest sinners, yeah. have the greatest right to my mercy. That he told her, when my heart was opened by a lance on the cross, my heart was opened for all, and, no one excluded. And that's why one of Father Seraphim's favorite prayers was the old blood and water right. prayer. And we know this right from the words of her diary, O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. Right. I trust in right. you. Well, Vinny, thank you. It's been a joy and a pleasure and an honor to spend this time with you in preparation for Divine Mercy Sunday. We hope all of you will take this opportunity for God's grace. Remember the elements. You can go back and see these shows on our website, the feast, the image, the novena, the chaplet, and the hour of mercy. You do these things, you'll be ready for Divine Mercy Sunday. And if not, you can also get the book that Vinny put together called The Seven Secrets of Divine Mercy. This is a great summary and a great answer to the questions that we have of why God's greatest attribute is mercy. So until next week, thank you, Vinny, and God thank bless you. all of you. Well, thank you again, Vinny, and that completes our series of interviews on the devotion of divine mercy. Now, speaking of the devotion, you may recognize this next man as somebody who brought the chaplet of divine mercy in the three o'clock hour to the world through song. Well, then he ran into some health issues and needed a kidney transplant, and truly his trust in mercy was put to the test. This is the incredible story of Michael Bethay.
To know the peace, to find the freedom Beyond all bitterness Michael Bethay known to his fans as the man with the voice of an angel. I will forgive. He knew early on that he was destined to use his talent as a singer to glorify God. I remember singing for my kindergarten graduation. I remember having the, having the cap and gown on and, and singing a song called I Love, I Love You Truly. But it was inevitable that I was gonna sing because all of my family members, they all sang. Michael devoted his life to using his voice to reach the hearts of others. And by the time he was an adult, his career skyrocketed. He shared the stage with well-known artists such as Keith Urban, CeCe Winans, and Amy Grant. Life was good, and his dream of using his voice to inspire the world was now a reality. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. In 2002, Music producer Trish Short asked he and recording artist Crystal Yates to join her in recording the Chaplet of Divine Mercy in Song at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy on the grounds of Eden Hill. The experience of being on Eden Hill was just, it was it was amazing just to see all the buses come coming from all over, like from Canada and everything, and there's like 20,000 people coming to this one place to worship God, you know, and I was a part of that. But at the age of 49, Michael was diagnosed with a rare, near fatal kidney disease. After seven years on dialysis, he was told he would need a kidney transplant to survive but his deep faith played a huge role in helping him to stay positive. When I first found out that I had kidney disease and I was gonna go on dialysis, that's when my faith kicked in even more because I knew that God had me. I, and, and I knew that I would get a kidney transplant. I didn't know when, but I knew it. My cup has always been full and running over. Uh, and, it's, and it's because of my faith. In 2016, Michael met the love of his life a waitress named Luann, who worked in a restaurant Michael and his family visited often. Luann remembers what attracted Michael to her the most. You know, it's funny, when I first started dating Michael, I, I don't know, God maybe put some blinders on me because I was not impressed with his, uh, his voice, his, his past, you know, singing career. And what I was impressed with was Michael's heart and, uh, it wasn't until after we were married that I guess God removed those blinders and let me enjoy Michael, and I just just fell in love with his voice, with his singing, with the passion that he has. And after only knowing Michael for two weeks, she made a life-giving decision. I said, you, you need a kidney, and Michael said, yes. I said, I'll give you a kidney. And I, I really think that God just was preparing me for that. Despite Michael's positive attitude, his condition worsened. He spent 10 days in a coma, sustained only by life support. Michael was dying. The word says that, you know, uh, God, he never forsake the righteous. You know, he, he, he loves us so much that he's not gonna let anything terrible happen with us. We're gonna go through a, a season, and to me, that, that was a season. Yea, though I walk through the valley, you know, of the shadow of death, you know, I, I will fear no evil. And that's a lot, has a lot to do with, with my face because I, I don't fear anything. I don't fear any, any evil. Unfortunately, Luann was not a donor match for Michael. But in 2017, another kidney donor was located. Luann still wanted to help. So she and Michael decided to enter the NFT Emory Donor Exchange Program. It was so exciting to know that someone else would benefit as well. And um, we ended up with 10 people in our, on our swap over four different states. Um, they flew my kidney to South Carolina, flew his in at the same hour from somewhere else. And it was just, just pure excitement. It, it really was. I'm so blessed to, 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 to have her in my life. I really am. For, for what she's done with, with the, do, the donating of her kidney to someone else, giving it you know, to someone else in order for someone else to give me a kidney.
After eight years, Michael was officially off dialysis. He indeed had a new lease on life. Now living in Destin, Florida, Michael still finds opportunities to use his voice to glorify God. He sings at the local Ocean Club restaurant, praises God in his church choir, and volunteers at a couple of local assisted living facilities. What I want people to take away from my music is knowing that all the music that I sing, it, it, it has integrity in, in, in it. Whatever I sing, you know, if, if I'm going to sing it, you know, if I'm going to sing, I'm still going to represent God in, in what it, whatever it is. All right, come on, girl. Come on. Through this challenge, Michael and Luann have learned to never take for granted the precious gift of life, and they plan to do all they can to be examples of how to live divine mercy every day. Divine mercy, um, it makes me think of God's grace daily. Eternal Father, I offer you. I, I don't know how I'd make it a day without God. And, and that prayer, I, I get chills. It just brings us closer to God. Holy God. It's about His grace for me, and by Jesus going to the cross and He shed His blood, you know, for the sake of His sorrowful passion, you know, we're asking God to have mercy on, on us. Well, thank you, Michael Bethay, for that amazing story. And so many people love watching you bring us the Chaplet of Divine Mercy in song. Now, let's hear in Scripture about this hour of mercy, that time where Jesus died on the cross. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi. Lama Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At this crucial moment of his passion, Jesus descends into the depths of human alienation from God because of sin. As the Catechism says, He assumed us in the state of our waywardness of sin to the point that he could say in our name from the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In other words, he took upon his heart an experience of separation from God that is analogous to the lot of every soul lost in mortal sin. That is why Jesus tells St. Faustina to pray at the hour of three o'clock. It is the hour of great mercy because it was at this hour on Good Friday that Jesus took upon himself the guilt and punishment of all the sins of the world. Our Lord says to St. Faustina, as often as you hear the clock strike the third hour, Immerse yourself completely in my mercy, adoring and glorifying it, invoking its omnipotence for the whole world, and particularly for poor sinners. For at that moment, mercy was opened wide for every soul. In this hour, you can obtain everything. It was the hour of grace for the whole world. Well, thank you, Kevin. And now let's hear from our beloved Father Seraphim more about the Hour of Mercy. In some towns, they would ring a bell at 3 o'clock. Same thing in some convents. But usually on Fridays only. And uh, even in our community, from its renovation... Uh, there was a prescription that at 3 o'clock on Friday we should commemorate the Passion of our Lord. But here, our Lord instructs Faustina to do this every day. <clears throat> and when he says, this is the hour of great mercy, he's not only talking about the first Good Friday. He is talking about 3 o'clock every day. And... I believe this is what can be applied also here, that when we stop for a moment 
and enter into that moment of our Lord's passion, we, in a sense, transport ourselves to that eternal moment because it is actually going on continuously at the throne of God. Jesus is offering himself until he comes again. At the three o'clock hour, implore my mercy, especially for sinners. And if only for a brief moment, immerse yourself in my passion, particularly in my abandonment at the moment of agony. This is the hour of great mercy for the whole world. I will allow you to enter into my mortal sorrow. In this hour, I will refuse nothing to the soul that makes a request of me in virtue of my passion. I remind you, my daughter, that as often as you hear the clock strike the third hour, immerse yourself completely in my mercy, adoring and glorifying it. Invoke its omnipotence for the whole world, and particularly for poor sinners. For at that moment, mercy was opened wide for every soul. In this hour, you can obtain everything for yourself and for others for the asking. It was the hour of grace for the whole world. Mercy triumphed over justice. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining us over these last several weeks talking about the elements of the devotion of divine mercy. Now, if you missed anything, that's okay. We have a great resource that will help you fill in the gaps and better explain everything you need to know about divine mercy. It's my book, Understanding Divine Mercy, and the information is there on your screen. Please get a copy. Now, until next week, where we will talk about the Triduum in preparation for Easter and Divine Mercy Sunday, may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.